Uh, we've almost, uh, I mean, we've reached the end of the course, right? Um, and uh, we have a few more sessions yet. And look at some additional topics, right? So, so today, <clears throat> just want to uh, focus on this whole thing of how God has created us to create, right? Our God is a creative God, right? How do we know that? We know that, but how do we know that? When you look at the book of Genesis itself, right? In the beginning, God created. That's how it starts, that he is the creator, the ultimate creator, right? And when we look, look at creation, we see that, well, God who created, he's so creative, right? When we say creative, which means, you know, we can see that there's so much of thought, there's so much of beauty, there's so much of newness, in all of God's creation, right? Whether it's nature, whether it's whether it's us, you know, the human body itself, right? So much of thought and so much of you know things that are going inside of us that when we look at it, when we study it, we see that God, you're so creative. You know, that's the that's our response. Right? So God is a creative God. The the beautiful thing is that we are created in his image. The Bible says that we are created in His image, spirit, soul, and body. That we are created in His image. Now, we know that with the fall, that got distorted, right? So we got distorted from the image of God. So which means that sin entered. And so we st still see different aspects of the beauty of God in us, in terms of character, in terms of nobility, in terms of you know creativity, and, and all these things we see in us, but it is distorted, it is broken, right? And it is restored in Christ Jesus. So we're on the path of restoration of the way God created us to be as original human beings, right? So every day, you know, when we renew our minds to the to the truth of God's word. When we when we come to him and we say yes, Lord, you know, change me, transform me, and we and Second Corinthians three eighteen says as we take a look at his glory and we take a glimpse of his glory, we are being transformed every day into that same image, right? What is that image, right? God says, let us create man in our own image. So that is what we are being restored to, you know, to be like Christ, to be Christ-like in in everything, thought, word, deed, right? So. Coming to creativity, God has created us to be creative beings. Right? And when it comes to praise and worship, right, one of the ways in which uh, God or God really requires us to be creative is in that of what the Lord says is, He says, you know, you come and you sing a new song. You come and you sing a new song. Let's look at Psalm 96 and verse 1. This is the exhortation, Psalm, Psalm 96 and verse 1. Okay, let me just share the screen. Um, this material that I'm sharing is um, actually from another uh, ministry called Sounds of the Nations. And if, if any of you attended the, um, you know, the, the Creativity or Christian Arts Conference, you may be familiar with this content, I'm not sure. But yeah, let me just share that screen. Okay. So we see that uh, Psalm 96 verse 1, okay, says, O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, sing unto the Lord all the earth. Okay. Sing unto the no Lord a new song, Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Okay. Uh, another scripture, Psalm 67, verses 5 to 7, right? Psalm 67, verse 5. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Then the earth will yield its harvest, uh, and our God, and God our God will richly bless us. Yes, God will bless us, and people all over the world will fear him. May all the nations praise you, and uh, the earth will yield its harvest, and so on. Right? So he's saying, as we praise, 
there's going to be a response. It's, it talks about the earth itself. There's a response from the earth itself. Right? There's something that is happening to nature itself. You know, as we praise God, as God is being praised, it says the earth will yield its harvest. Right? All the nations will praise you, and so on. Right? And all the people all over the world will fear him when his words or when his characteristics are being realized says all the the people all over the world will fear you know there's a reverential fear of god okay another another scripture that we can look at look at is psalm 40 and verse 3 okay psalm 40 verse 3 it says he put a new song in my mouth a hymn of praise to our god many will see it and fear the lord and put their trust in him right so he's saying many will see so he's put a new song in my mouth a hymn of praise to our god many will see and fear the lord and put their trust in him so you see these are some of the um you can say response or outcome of this new song okay so what is this new song when you look at that word new song we understand that god wants to release something new on the earth right a revelation of him maybe you know a facet of his characteristic that people are maybe not aware of or maybe they have forgotten and god wants to reiterate that he wants to do a new thing right the lord wants to do a new thing release a new thing and release a new song and that is why we see uh, exhortation in scripture saying, you know, sing a new song to the Lord, something that you've not sung before, something that has not been heard before. And in the Greek, there is a word uh, for this new, which means kainos, you know, we say new creation, kainos, which means something that is unused, something that has not been seen or heard before, something that is so original, right? So he's saying, sing to the Lord a new song. And it is in the context of, Praising our God, worshiping our God, right? And we know that when, when we sing a new song, it is not just the song and the words and the melody, but it's the truth of who God is, and that's why it is powerful, right? And it's, a, it's an exhortation, it's a command. Um, let's sing to the Lord a new song, okay? So let's look at what is this new song? Psalm 96 we saw. Sing to the Lord a new song. And the, the same word new, you know, parallel to that word in Greek, kainos, that word here in Hebrew means new, something new, something fresh, right? It also make, means to make new or to repair, to mend. Like singing a new song has that whole aspect of there's a healing, there's a repairing, there is a mending that is happening, okay? We also need to understand that, that the new need not always be something that is not seen before. Okay, so that is what we think. No, I need to do something. I need to sing something which has not been there. It's a revelation of something, a new revelation of something that is always there. Right? It's a fresh approach to something that we already know or already that we have heard. So it brings a lot of refreshing. Yeah. So when it comes to creativity, when it comes to you know creating something, there's a lot of pressure. Right? I need to do something new. Um, you know, have you been in camps where um, you know you're split into groups, right? And then by evening you're supposed to come up with a skit and a song or something, right? Yeah, youth camp or church camp. Some you know you've been in this, and then they say, okay, this is a, this is your group. This is you come up with a name for your group, you come up with a skit, you have to come up with a song, and you know you need to do that in the evening, and uh, and then everybody's you know there's going to be prizes, they're going to be just there's a lot of pressure. Everybody's like, what do we do? What do we do? And then you look at the other group, and hey, they're already you know they're already practicing, and we've not even come up with an idea. You no, know, hey, let's do something. There's a lot of pressure, a lot of tension, right? So we need to understand that you know there is as creative people as people who have who have that image of god to be creative the aspect of god to be creative there's a lot of pressure in us whenever we think of creative things i need to do something something new and there's a you know something that has never been done before 
right? So we see that, you know, innovation, there's, a, there's something called innovation. What is innovation? To innovate. Okay, let's look at two words. Invention. Innovation. Okay, who invented the engine, the steam engine? Okay, electricity bulb. Thomas Alva Edison, huh? Okay. Right? He invented it. Right? And do we have innovations of it? Right? Different versions of it. And if you look at the metro, which runs, it's an innovation. It doesn't run on steam anymore. It doesn't run on coal anymore, but it runs on electricity. Right? Same as, your, as our bikes. Right? It was invented many years ago. And then now we see a different version of it, innovation of it. Right? And it runs on battery and, and all that. Right? So two things, invention, innovation. So both are important and valid expressions of creativity. Right? So when we innovate, it means that something that is already there, but you're changing it completely, you're changing it, and you're adding aspects of it. It is already there, but there's a freshness when it's innovated upon. There's a newness of you know, use and, and um, you know, efficiency and, and usefulness and all that when we innovate. Okay. So why are we looking at all this? That, that um, when we look at creative, I'm just going to um, skip a few things. Yeah. When we look at bringing a new song, like singing a new song, okay? and the scripture says, sing a new song to the Lord. Okay. So it's, it's bringing a freshness to the truth, to the timeless truth, which is already there in scripture. Okay. So there is the truth of God's word. There is a truth that maybe people have been singing, declaring, but you're bringing a freshness to it in the song that you bring. Okay. So how can we bring a freshness to it? It could be in the, in the whole melody of the song, right? How can we bring a freshness to it? It can bring the language of the song. Right? So maybe the language, uh, you know, our, our language has changed over the years. Yes or no? Yes. You know, the way we, uh, you know, people spoke maybe 50 years ago, 100 years ago, and the way we see things, you know, how, uh, you know, if you look at some of these old dramas, right, plays, you see the way the, they speak, in a, you know, about the kings and all that, so theater and so much of, you know, hype and drama, right? But you see that the language has changed over the years, right? Even if you look at, you know, the versions of the Bible, like you see that, why do we have different versions without compromising the truth so that it can be relevant, right? So that it can, we can really get the full meaning of it, right? So that it can, you know, we can apply it, it can really impact us. Right? So when it comes to new song, when it comes to creativity, it is bringing that freshness in expression. Right? So it could be a, an old song, an old hymn, but you, when you bring contemporary language to it, right? when we bring a contemporary language to it, then it becomes really fresh. Right? So it could be a song about God's love, right? um, and maybe we, we sang it in different ways then, saying that God loves us and, and uh, you know, we, the theologically strong parts of it, but then maybe... Today, we sing about the love of God, and there are songs about the love of God, which are in modern, contemporary language. Same truth, but the language is different, right? Your love never fails, it never gives up, never gives up on me, right? So maybe 100 years ago, nobody would have sung, it never gives up on me, right? Any other song that we can think of, you know, um, which has a you know new language, but hundred years ago they wouldn't have sung it in that way. Great is thy faithfulness. Okay, great is thy faithfulness. An old hymn, right? 
any other you can you see any can you see look at any new versions of it talking about the faithfulness of god goodness of god faithful you are right uh, what song is that <laughs> forget the title hmm Uh, I'm not able to get the song. I'm just trying to sing it in my mind. But yeah. So you see, you know, you get the point, right? So it could be sung in a different way. But then today, it makes sense. When you, when you give a freshness to it in contemporary language. You know, I'm so there are a lot of, uh, you know, if, if you look at um, like some of our Hindi songs also um, that we sing. Gaayenge, um, naachenge, du macha denge. Right? Um, what does it? How does it start? Yeshu ki gungan karenge. Aao milke, aao milke. Right, that's the name of the song, right? and that's sung by Sounds of the Nations again. Um, so aao milke. Nachenge gaenge doom macha denge. And then you know, but if you look at hundred years ago, maybe people wouldn't have thought of using those words, right? But it's become a normal contemporary language expressing the same sentiments right? so we're just saying that you know when it comes to a new song you're bringing a fresh perspective perspective to a truth that is eternal truth that is timeless okay but we just need to make sure that hey let let me not compromise on the truth that i'm singing right so when you look at a new song or any song what does it start with what is the starting block or the, you know, the first step? The step is always a revelation about God. Okay. A revelation about God. Yes, uh, it can also be a melody that could be birthed in our hearts. But when it comes to uh, a new song, it's, it's a revelation about God. It's a new or, or a fresh revelation, a fresh understanding of who God is. Like a fresh impartation of, of, the, of the love of God, a fresh impartation of the you know, greatness of God, uh, and also a fresh revelation about, about ourselves as disciples, as ourselves as you know, children of God, uh, you know, all that, a fresh revelation. So really, a song starts with that. Okay? So many of you are thinking, you know, maybe I don't, I don't write songs, uh, I've never written songs before, and you know, all this is irrelevant. But then the thing is that, all of us can, all of us can write to some extent. We may not be able to, you know, at the beginning itself, we may not be able to write some fantastic songs. There is a process. We get better at it, but we can, right? We can express what revelation God has put in us in song, right? So sing to the Lord a new song. Is it an exhortation for the musicians and singers or is it for all believers? What do you think? Fair question, right? Is it for all or is it for some? It's for all, right? So which means that it is possible, practically possible for all to sing a fresh and new song to the Lord, right? Paul writes and he says, be filled with the Spirit. And at the outcome, you know, the end result of it is a birth of the psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to the Lord, right? Paul also says, 1 Corinthians 14, he says, I will pray with the Spirit, I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, I will also sing with the understanding. Right? Sing with the Spirit or sing in the Spirit, which means in tongues. When we are singing out, you're singing something that is birthed by the Spirit of God. right? Uh, or led by the Spirit of God. And he says, both are valid. So it's applicable for all. Okay? So the new song, it's going to create an atmosphere for the revelation. So let's look at uh, some sources, you know, from where can we get these new songs. Okay. So let's look at Colossians 3 verse 16. We've looked at this, we've looked at this word, um, we looked at this verse before, right? Colossians 3 verse 16. Um, it says, let the word of Christ dwell in your hearts. 
Just give me a minute. Colossians 3, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So let the word of God, Christ dwell in you richly. So when the word of God dwells in us, what does it mean to dwell? Dwell. Hmm. Making its home. You know, we use that in, in a place, you know, when we say dwelling place, okay, this is where I stay. This is where I where I stay. You know, this is where my belongings are. This is where I spend a time there. This is where I rest. Right? Um, yeah, I see some responses here. Be inside you. Yes. Right? Stay inside. So it's not just checking in, checking out, and never visiting that place again, but it's something that abides, stays, continues, right? and uh, it's strong inside. So Paul's writing and saying, let the word of Christ dwell in you. So what can you and I, you know, what changes or what steps can you and I make to ensure that the word of Christ dwells in us richly? <clears throat> Anyone? Yeah, yeah. What do you think? What what can you and I, you know, steps can we take to ensure, you know, he says, okay, let the word of Christ dwell. So what do you think you can take or you can make? What steps, what do you need to do in order to let the word of Christ dwell, stay, abide? Initially? What do you think? Any thoughts? Here, anyone? How will you ensure that it stays in you? Read, meditate. <clears throat> so meditate means to think. So give space in our minds for the word of God. Right? In intentionally give space, give that mind space for the word of God to stay there. Right, which means you think intentionally think about it. Right? Think about the promise of God. Think about because if we are totally disconnected from the word of God, then there's no way that we can allow the word of God to stay in our hearts, stay in our minds. Right? So one way is to, you know, to make it a regular habit of, of course, reading, studying the word of God, and also meditating on the word of God. Right? So the Bible talks about how. A, a man who delights in the word of God, he meditates on it day and night. Okay, so so the think, think about it. Look at our own lives and say, okay, do I think about the word of God? Of course, I read it, but do I think about it during the day? Right? Do I think about what I've read? And as, do I reflect on what I read about the word of God? Do I think about it? You know, that's something for us to, you know, to think about today, right? Do I think about the Word of God? I have 24 hours, you know, I go for classes, whatever. Of course, here we do read the Word, but then something that you have read, something that made sense to you, okay, something that probably caught your attention or not, or even if not, do I think about it? Hey, this is what the Bible says. Um, now, how can I apply it in my life? Or it can even be like this. You know, this is what the Word of God says. Hey, I, I think it's it's a little difficult. I think that's a difficult word. Or this is what the Word of God says. I think it's beautiful. I think it's wonderful. This is what the Word of God says. And when I look at the need around it, I think this is the right answer. This is the right, you know, thing that can take care of this need. So what are we doing? We are actually thinking about the word of God. Okay. So it's an intentional thing. And when we delight in the word of God, we will think, we will meditate on it. And we delight in the word of God. Okay, what does that word delight mean? Happy to? Happy to do? Okay. Any other 
rejoicing there's a you know there's a great rejo you know, not just happy but great happiness right you looking forward yeah what else you said something yeah taking pleasure in yeah you know it's like wow you know i i just delight in it i i like it so saying is talking about a man who delights in the word of god so when we delight in something we will our mind will be on it but if not we will not right so you say okay uh, you know you're hungry and you're planning for some you know meal and you oh i just thinking of that that biryani that i had that place you know you're just thinking about it and and you're planning right i just need to go there and and you and you talk about it you know we talk about food right you say oh that place that we have went and that you know biryani that we had it was fantastic i know we stood in the line for so many uh, you know uh, the same we had to stand for for a long queue to buy, but then wow it was worth it talk about it you think about it you you recommend it to others you know, you, hey, you need to try it you're delighting in it right or it could be something you know like a musical instrument or something that you bought or, you know you you're cherishing it you're protecting it and you're making sure that it's all fine and then you every time you take it and you play it you know there's so much of happiness and delight and you're really you know, enjoying it so it talks about that kind of an experience a person has with the word of god right so it's not just okay i need to read it otherwise you know god's not going to be happy i need to read it because you know it's 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 the right thing to do for a christian no it's delighting it's taking enjoyment in the word of god knowing that it is words our spirit and in life you know like um uh while you know the lord jesus gives this teaching about how his body uh and um, about his about the sacrifice about the cross right he's teaching the disciples and uh, he's talking about you know you need to partake of this body and drink of the blood what he was he was talking about the communion which he will later teach but he was talking about this you know this needs to become a part of you this revelation this about the cross death burial resurrection this needs to be a part of you right you need to you need to receive this and then a lot of people left after that the bible says soon after that teaching a lot of disciples left they were following christ for that till that time and they left so the lord jesus you know turns to the 12 who were there and says you know uh, will you also leave right and peter says lord where can we go where can we go for you have the words of eternal life where can we go so he's had this experience all these disciples have had that experience the 12 who were there have had that experience of hearing his word hearing the teaching and he says this is the conclusion this is eternal life you have the words of eternal life where can we go right so and the lord jesus says yes the words that i speak they are spirit and they are indeed life so when we have a grasp of the importance what the word can do the value of the word of god then we will begin to delight in it right and maybe intentionally sometimes we just need to push through push through that dryness you know push to make a conscious choice to you know i don't feel like it but then just do it and then all the feel right read the word of god the feelings will catch up read the word of god pray have a conversation with the you know with god through his word and and all those emotions will catch up right so delighting in the word of god right so so that is one of the things you know when you do that what will be an outflow will be all these psalms and songs and spiritual you know hymns and songs spiritual songs to the lord so that's what colossians 3 um, talks about right and it says the effect of it psalm 40 and verse 3 says many will see it this new song it's going to have impact you know just think about it some of the songs that have come up you know released through those years through the years by the church right by the different people and have they made an impact in your life some songs are very simple right same line sung thrice the fourth line different we exalt thee we exalt thee we exalt thee o oh lord but what an impact it has made to the worshiper Just think about it S simple songs right 
but it made sudden impact because it comes from that place of revelation of whoever was the writer of the song saying, oh, I've seen this. We exalt you. I exalt you, O oh God. And there's so much of anointing on the, you know, on the, maybe the, the writer and so the song itself and so anointed, right? So it has made an impact. So Psalm 40 says, many will see it. You know, that's the reality. You know, if, if it's a new song that is bringing about that freshness of the revelation uh, from the word of God, it is going to have impact. It is going to have impact. Many will see it. Many will be blessed. It says here, many will see it and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Many will fear the Lord. See it meaning, you know, experience it. They will fear the Lord. They will revere the Lord. They will come to an understanding of, of who God is and put their trust in him. Right? As much as preaching and teaching, you know, creates that, creates that response if it's received in faith, so also the new song. And the beauty of the song is that it cuts through even reason. It cuts through hard logic, right? I'm sure many of you, many of us, we went, you know, maybe we've gone shopping somewhere, we went to some departmental store to buy some things and and you know, there's this pleasant music in the background. And without realizing, right, maybe you start singing it. You start, if it's a familiar song, you started singing it. And without realizing, you felt calmer. You know, you just felt at peace. You felt, you felt nice. And you wanted to stay there for some more time. And that's what the shop also wants you to do. They want you to stay for some more. They want you to stay for some more time. Look at some of the more of their products that you don't need and buy it. Right. So the song does that. You know, I remember we we went for um for an outreach, uh, for Christmas outreach, and we went to this apartment, right? So they allowed us to do that. So one hour and all the you know, it's like an amphitheater. A lot of people have come, and most of them are not Christians. Uh, they've come because you know. Everything, they, every you know, kind of a uh, festival they want to celebrate. So they've come for Christmas and they're waiting for Santa Claus and all that, you know, uh, all that to happen. And the kids are there, and, and we was just singing some, you know, chorus, uh, some carols, Christmas carols, and we also started singing some of the, some of the worship songs. You know, that's because that's the best thing. You know, you have a captive audience. Why not? You know, we're just singing uh, songs like "Yes, Lord." You know, you. I'm trading my sorrows and singing, you know, how great is our God and all that. And, uh, and uh, you know, some fun songs, but with the truth. Um, so we finished. We, we finished the song, we wrapped up, everything, packing up. And so this guy comes, right? And um, he's a little tipsy. He's had a couple of drinks. So he comes and he says, uh, he says, that was fantastic. Whatever I experienced was fantastic, you know. Uh, he was not a believer, but he said, you know, as you were singing, something happened. As you guys were singing, something happened. You know, something came from the stage. Uh, this is how he, because he didn't have language for experiencing, I don't know, presence of God, peace of God, whatever. He said, you know, I experienced something coming from the stage, filling me. And I felt so much lighter. I felt light. I felt peace. I felt so good. There's something that was coming from the stage and filling me. And, you know, this is how I felt. So, obviously not a believer. So he didn't have any language, vocabulary of a believer, you know. Uh, I, felt, I felt blessed. Nothing of that sort. But this is how he experienced, explained it in his own words. He said, I felt this. I experienced this. Right? So that's the power of a song, of a song of praise to God, a song of worship to God, and a new song. So that is what it says, you know, many will see it, they will fear, they will put their trust in you. So it was an opportunity to share with him and say, hey, you know, this is who Jesus is. This is what God wants in your life. And what you experience is actually the touch of God, the presence of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit. Right? And you can give your heart to God and so on. So it is an opportunity for us to, to minister to him. Right? So this is, this is what scripture is talking about. Psalm 40 it says, many will see it. 
they will fear the Lord and put their trust in Him. So don't underestimate the power of a song. Don't underestimate the power of a new song that comes from a revelation, a fresh revelation of God, you know, bringing a freshness of an understanding of God. Right? So don't underestimate it. Okay? So it comes from the, the written word of God as we abide in it, as we, as we fill ourselves with it. Um, it also comes from the spoken word. Right? What is the Holy Spirit quickening to us right now? The Rhema word of God. Okay? The Rhema word, the Logos, the principles and precepts by themselves are so rich because it's the eternal truth, but also the quick end or the rhema word of God. What is the difference? As we read the logos, as we engage with the logos, as we meditate on the logos, the spirit of God quickens the logos to us, and that becomes a rhema, right? That's, we, are, we understand those two words, right? Logos, rhema, right? Both those Greek words talking about the word of God, referring to the word of God. And we look at, when we look at Ephesians 6, you know, it talks about the armor of God. It says, um, you know, what is another piece of the armor, which is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And the word used there is rhema, which is, hey, the sword of the spirit is the word of God, the quickened word of God, the rhema word of God that God puts in your heart. That's like a sword. That's like a weapon. When you speak it, when you declare it, that's a weapon. Right? Weapon against discouragement, weapon against unbelief, and so on. The rhema word of God. So when we look at the spoken word of God, what is the Holy Spirit quickening? Right? And sometimes it is even in the messages that we are hearing. We are hearing the word. We are hearing a message, and the Holy Spirit quickens that truth to our hearts. And that becomes a rhema word for us to, to use in a new song as well. So... Um, the third source, of course, we read about it in Ephesians 5 and verse 18. Um, is it, um, let's look at that. Ephesians 5. Okay. Do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Okay. So... The Holy Spirit fills us, and there is an overflow of the Holy Spirit filling us, and it comes out you know, in all these ways, making melodies in our heart to the Lord, um, singing to the Lord in, um, you know, in tongues, and so on. Okay, so the Lord wants us to engage in this. It's His, it's, it's his will. It's His desire. Right? Even as we worship Him, as we praise Him. Yeah. The Lord wants us to, to think about this, to engage in this. Even as we are exhorted in the, psalm, in the Psalms. You know, sing to the Lord a new song. Right? The Lord wants to put a new song of praise in our hearts. So that others, it will be a testimony to others. Right? So others to receive, others to turn to the Lord. It has a purpose. It's not to make the song songwriter popular. It's not to make the team popular or the church that releases it popular. Right? It's not about awards and all that, but it is so that God might, uh, the people might turn to the Lord. The people will put their fear and trust in Him, and it is so that He might be known. Right? And so that people will can have entered into this beautiful relationship or continue on their relationship. And, and whatever the word that God is giving, you know, it can be a strength. It can be an encouragement as we journey on with God, right? Okay, so God wants us to be stewards. Who is a steward? Steward? Anyone? People who are? Keeper. Yeah? Okay. Caretaker. We, we see that word, no? In, in, in the Bible, we see. You know, God wants us to be stewards of the revelation. Uh, he says, well done, he's a, he's a good and faithful steward. Or taking care of something that has been given to us. Okay, let me just look if there's any response online, folks. Um, yeah, uh, Shani, you want to ask a question? 
Oh yeah, it was from Psalms. Um, uh, it's, I think it's not coming through here. Yeah? Um, you want me to say something? Can you hear me? Um, I'm sorry, uh, I'm, I'm not able to hear. It's not coming. Whatever they're saying, no, it's not. Um, Shani, you can just hold on to the question. Once we fix it, you can ask. Yeah, yeah. Faithful servant. Okay. But steward also has this aspect of something that has been given to you. Okay, so you already, uh, so Prem, you already have something. So when you say faithful servant, it's like what I do with what has been given to me, right? Um, it's not just the thing of, okay, I'm, I want to help, I want to do this um, in order to serve, but it's also with what has been given. So that added aspect of what, have, what we have given. Right. So, this revelation, this understanding, this ability, this skill, right? So, God expects us to be faithful stewards of it. Okay. So, it has this. When you say steward, yes, you know, all that, whatever you shared about being an overseer, being a manager, right? Someone who increases what has been given. Right? what has been given, someone who's faithful, not to lose it, not to squander it, but to use it in a faithful manner. And so that uh, when, when we have to give an account of what did you do with it, we can give an account, this is what I did. You know, I was faithful with it, I made sure that I did not lose it, but I also made sure that I you know, did something with it so that it was a blessing. Okay? okay, we'll stop here, and then we'll take a break, and then we'll come back.